This is the Colonel Rad Alert. Civil defense information will be broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K. How can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Who for five years? Thousand gallons of gas, air filtration, water filtration. Coming at you from the beautiful state that is Tennessee in the Union of the United States. <laughs> Streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, sometimes not Rumble tonight, and Odyssey. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I'm Toolman Tim. Today is Lucky 13, October 13th, 2023, and this is episode 384 of Workshop Radio. How in the world is everyone out there? I see we've got some comments. Howdy, howdy, Backwoods Butcher, Byron Roberts. Good evening, Tim and Becky. Off-grid ping. Man, everybody we just saw. A rap yay. Great to see you guys. So we had to get on live. We just come back from, what would we call this? The, the first unofficial night. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Rachel Brown. The first unofficial night of Self-Reliance Festival. But I wanted to make sure we get on and did a roundup of... What do we call it? The GSD weekend, the GSD yeah. day or whatever from the workshop from Delinquents Gully. We had one hell of a time. And tomorrow morning is going to be balls to the wall for the next 48 hours at Self Reliance Festival. Yeah. So I think we need to have a beer. <laughs> also, check this out. I picked this up early at Self Reliance tonight. Self Reliance pre party. Yes, it is unofficial, uh, official, unauthorized mead from Self Reliance Festival. So what do we want to share, Mrs. Cook? Where did we... Yeah. So we had, in case everybody wants to know, this is a pretty incredible day, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it has been. Yeah, we uh, we had a... Well, anyway, it went from um, 18 people, babe? I yeah. Think. Yeah, we had 18 people at the <sighs> workshop. And yeah, so what did we do? Do a little talk and share for me. How, yeah. Where did the day start out with? Um... Just trying to think here. Put you on the spot. Yeah, you did. Sorry. Um, nope. So we uh, uh, we met. We had some people that came down on what it was Wednesday, right? right. Yeah, because today There's is Friday. Christopher, yeah. CJ. Now we CJ Mohammed. Good to see you, Christopher. So we had some people come down on Wednesday. Yep. Um, and then. And we just kind of sat around that evening. Yeah, we just kind of chilled. We hung up a little bit of solar lights yes. and everything. So we was had that, some lights. Yeah. Yep. And and a, the outhouse was already done by mm -hmm. that point. And then, because um, we had went and bought supplies and stuff so we could have lights and we could sit back there. And then Thursday morning, we, we got out there, but what, was it 9 or 10? Yeah, I think no, we got 9. 9 o'clock. I tried to be there for 8.30. It was yeah. about 9 o'clock by the time. So well, we, we had to stop and pick up a couple. We things, did. We so. had a little bit of supplies. Uh, yeah. yeah, some screws and some more solar lights. Yes. And then, just like my wonderful brother-in-law, you have a... An addiction to exterior illumination. Well, that, but it gets really dark back in there. It does, and and, and of course, and we're and we're doing our best to clear it, but there's still those stumps, and and we and I didn't want people who are staying there. I didn't want them like you know going ass over tea kettle, tripping over these stumps, and not being able to see where they're going. Right? Exactly. And, and not everybody remembers to bring a flashlight, or if you have a flashlight, chances are you know like it could die and it everything. Sure could. So, so I would just wanted to make sure that everybody was safe getting around as far as the solar lights could take us that didn't have a huge supply of them unfortunately but um it was it was about a 12 hour day which was yes. a half a day yeah but the weather was good it was it's a little warm it was, sure, it was well, muggy it, and it was on that verge of mugginess where you thought it was going to rain but it didn't i've i've gotten used to it just a little bit so mm -hmm. i got i gotta thank uh sean sean mill's wife dawn <laughs> yeah. because when i when they came out the other day to work and i'm like Hey, uh, I give you a hug, but I'm all sweaty. She's like, don't worry about it. You need to embrace the fact that when you're in Tennessee, everybody sweats. And of course, I sweat all the time anyway. Yeah. But it was, anyway, I'm embracing the humidity of it. And I actually, I've enjoyed it. You just, you just pace yourself. Well, and I find though, like, well, if you're working anywhere, you're going to sweat. Yeah. But I find with the humidity 
And then, of course, with it being this time of year, it's getting cooler at night. Yes. It, it can, it makes you really oh, yeah. uncomfortable, right? Like, so the evening, that was what we, we didn't, that was the first time we've experienced that down here. Yeah. We went from hot, humid, sweating work to within, when the sun went down, it got cold that, that night. It last did. night was good but the night and then, before was of chilly. course then we had that damp sweat and our clothes were were damp and and i had the chills all night so we get back to the hotel and we're both like <laughs> i'm like what is wrong with me it would be freaking zero celsius 32 fahrenheit in alberta and we're sitting here freezing our balls off <laughs> right so then so thursday we made sure that we brought a change of clothes so he could change out of the damp stuff and which I didn't use because nope. it didn't get cold that night. So no, okay. but I but I did, and then I had long sleeves because it, it again it was warm, but the temperatures dropped again. And and we didn't stay too late on Thursday. Everybody was beat. We were. We yeah. 30 we left, I think. Yeah. Right? Or, yeah. We probably would have stayed longer, but um Nobody you was... could tell that um well, Carrie was sitting there and you could tell he couldn't keep his eyes open anymore. He he was like, done. I think he went to bed before. He did. He's like, all right, boys, I'm going. Yeah. He was he, an Americanized Brian says. <laughs> but you could you could tell Carrie couldn't even keep his eyes open and and um and then Lester and or not Lester, uh Herschel and Norman, they left early because they were they were done. And uh Red but, Moose Firm. I, they must be home. So that's Steve and Ambie. Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> one day late birthday, Ambie. But we'll tell yeah. you guys that story in a minute. It was good. So. Yeah. So like, but you could tell everybody was just spent. Yes. But it was a really good day. we got 28 viewers on here right now. Good to nice. see everybody. So I, this was the perfect bookend for, I mean, so we still, it's cool. This is like, you remember when the Avengers, the, the last Avengers Endgame came? And it <laughs> yeah. was like the best way to end a series. Yeah. And then they... Then they come up with a great Spider-Man movie after that. And it was like, oh, this is icing on the cake. Well, that's what Self-Reliance Festival is now for yeah. us. Because oh, 34. 34, wow. So here, this is where it started, guys. Mm -hmm. It started 31 days ago at 3.30 in the morning in Alberta with a lost wallet. Just excited as hell to get on the road. Four weeks ago tonight, I was in Illinois with Nate and Aaron. And a whole bunch, way more than we expected, workshop delinquents. Yep. Fast forward to 27 days later, and we are having the most incredible get shit done day I've ever been a part of, which was awesome. Yep. At Delinquent Scully, for any of those you don't know, first off, if you're a member, if you hang out, if you're affiliated with any of us ruffians in the workshop, Somehow the phrase became delinquents. We're all the delinquents. Because we are delinquents. We are delinquents. And delinquent <laughs> means living outside the system, living outside the norms, living outside hey, the rules of normal We society. could be Dottie's dirt pile. We could be, yes. Because <laughs> Dottie is a dirt bag. So we oh, could be dirt bags. That's true. But I prefer delinquents. Delinquents. And yes. I, I, so um, kudos goes to Brian Alexovich for that, because he came up with the delinquents, which is yeah. a perfect name. And then I, I came up with the definition after it for him. And then the day we were down at... The gully, the first time, our property. Yep. When we got to be there with Corey, Brian, Carrie, we were just, we we're almost done. And yep. Carrie's like, This is a nice little gully you have here, Tim. And uh, I was like, There it is. Yeah. Delinquents Gully. That's it. And we all looked at each other and we knew that was going to be the name going forward. And so we needed to name the outhouse. So we yep. came up with a name for that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Backwoods Butcher's been called worse. Everybody's got to know Kyle's awesome. His wife's even awesomer. <laughs> great, great couple to meet you so far, guys. We love you. So, yeah, it's awesome. So, anyway, four weeks ago, Illinois, workshop, get together. Four weeks later, workshop, get together in Tennessee on our land. Mm -hmm. So, I got I to gotta, I gotta shout out everybody. I got to try to thank everybody. Well, you got a can. list there. Yep, I made a list so that I would not forget this time because I want to make <laughs> sure. But, anyway, I'm going to – so. We'll fill you in on kind of how the day went and what people did because it was just incredible what got done. So one thing you need to know, if you're ever having a get shit done day or work week weekend or whatever it happens to be, have a lot of jobs lined up. Because the last thing you want to do is somebody to be nice enough to come and spend their time with you and not have something for them to do, not honoring their time, right? So before we even started, we said, Pie in the sky, in Nicole's terms, big, hairy, audacious goal would be a bridge, a cabin, some trails, and some firewood. Yep. Never thought we'd get it all done. Well, guys, we now have a cabin, a bridge, firewood, and trails. 
and extra campsites. It was incredible. So Carrie and his buddy Dylan, yeah, 31 on Facebook. Yeah, my hey Gracie, great to see you. 40, 41 live viewers all together. It's great to see everybody in here tonight. So Carrie and Dylan, they absolutely killed the bridge. Yeah, that thing is awesome. And it and they will say it too. It looks like a Dr. Seuss bridge. It's awesome. It's like it has a wave to it. It is so eccentric in the best way possible. Yeah. They it's stay beautiful. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. And you could park an SUV on it, I think. It was it's Tim proof, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's Tim proof. It is. So the bridge until you start hauling stuff over it and start railing things on it, and then then we'll see. We'll see. I think we'll do well. It's awesome. We're gonna put a <laughs> railing on it, but Either way, <laughs> I, I got to shout this out. Kyle said, um, we got in the car, and she says, do you think they liked me? We liked you enough that we talked about you at Taco Bell tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and I looked at my wife, and I said, I, I bet you that Kyle's wife was nervous about getting to meet us all, but we loved her. I said, she's pretty awesome, way better than Kyle himself, right? So, and my daughter happens to say that nothing's Tim proof. So we got 55 live viewers, guys. It's great to have Nothing you. is Tim proof. No, nothing. it isn't. So, okay. So Carrie and Dylan knocked the damn bridge right out of the park. Absolutely. Herschel and Norman, they showed up. Awesome dudes. I, yeah. yeah. I, I knew um, which one is which. I don't want to give away the handle. But anyway. Uh, uh, no, uh, Herschel's the one with the white beard. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so... Anyway, they worked on trails all day. And and I actually uh, spent some time with them, talking to them. Okay. Um, they are from uh, New Hampshire. Right. And they just moved to Tennessee in June. Oh, yeah. So, that's right. And, and, and to make it even... Here, 61 live viewers. And, and to make here. it even better, it's like they're only 20 minutes away from our land. And they're in the... Like, their land is um, a lot clearer. But they're, like, more clear than ours. But they're doing the same thing. Like, they're... They're building things up. They're they said their um their barns going up this week. Yes, they and, give us a connection to a local sawmill. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So they no really really great people. Just want to yeah. shout out to my buddy Pat. He's uh, one half of the the dynamic duo that plans uh, Midwest Preparedness Festival. Okay, not sure if he's going to be at Self Reliance Festival or not, but he will be there. So <laughs> nothing. So oh man, so Herschel and Norman cleared a ton of trails to the point where they're like we got to sit down for a while oh yeah it no they awesome. were they were like beasts with those yeah they it was oh man yeah. andy andy uh higginbotham which you guys have seen in here he's just the dude is a machine he shows up he feeds us he brings all the food won't take a cent for it. he just that's andy i just love you andy i will brag you to the end of the earth spent the entire day building the well he he didn't cabin. show up wednesday till 1 30 in the morning oh right shows up middle of the night yep and then got up early and cooked everybody breakfast. And, and not just like a, a chintzy breakfast. It was like bacon and eggs and pancakes. And, and did it all with a fucking smile on his face. Yeah. Like that dude is an encouragement all the time. And then, and then he went up and like was on the, on was the, on the roof. roof. He was putting the, the, the tin on the roof because, yeah. you know, I mean, could I do it? Sure. Did I love that Andy wanted to do it? Yes, I did. Yep. And I'm like, hey, dude, if you're. If you're tired or hungry, we can stop, have supper, and finish. He goes, no, let's just barrel through. I'm like, that's what I like. Yeah, and then he came down, and he served everybody. Did. He sure did. <laughs> Crazy guy. Holy cow. Yeah. Pippin drove all the way here from Florida. Pippin, if you don't know, he is the duck guy. If you don't know what the duck guy is, yeah, I don't either. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Jeep people love ducks, and this is his side hustle that uh, is really cool. Yeah, they're like suction ducks yeah. or whatever, yeah. Oh, Pip, uh, yeah, Pip, you're awesome. He just sent me some video just as I was about to go live. I'm like, I can't watch it now. But he took a ton of video, which was great because I didn't. I did some, yeah. but I didn't do enough. So, well, it's just one of those things. Like, do you take the time to do the videoing, or do you take the time to actually do the work? Right. Right. So, like, you want to be able to, and of course, and then you don't want to like look like a slacker walking around no, videoing. The exactly. Whole thing. So no, I and yeah. and and I yeah, I kept trying to. You try to balance out anyway, but it was all yeah, Pippin. So we had a bunch up there working on. So we had Pippin up there. Uh, Jeremy, uh, one step closer. Love you, brother. It was uh, right, he was at Midwest Preparedness and here he was working on it. Michael was there as well. Sean and Don showed up yep. near the end of the day. It was great to see them. Who else? Make sure I get every Brian and Corey. Brian, you are my right arm, left arm. I don't even know what to call it. The dude is out at the, the land all the time. And we, well, he's your brother from another mother. He is. And he puts up with all my damn dad jokes. So I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, he puts up with all my, well, let's do this and let's do that. 
<laughs> Every time we talk. She's like, you know what we need? We need indoor plumbing. And, and not just indoor plumbing, but, you know, indoor heat. Heated, heat. Yeah. heated indoor plumbing. <laughs> and two more people. I've Yeah, we're at 83 right now, guys, between Facebook and YouTube. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Okay. Next. Uh, who do we? Jamie. Dude, if you're in here listening right now, you don't know how great. I've seen you in here. So, Jamie, this is Jamie right here, guys. Everybody who's in here, we got 83 right now. Go and follow Off Grid Ping on YouTube. He's just growing his channel. He is a salt of the earth neighbor from up the road of me. The dude doesn't know us from Adam, other than the fact that he just followed the YouTube channel and joined the Telegram group recently. That man, when I say he worked, he fucking worked. Well, and I made the comment day. earlier. I don't. I have never, Jamie. I have never seen somebody split and stack firewood as quick. <laughs> All he, damn he did awesome. Day. Like yeah, like I, I've never seen somebody cut firewood so quick, and 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 not like and not just cut it, but actually cut it and stack it too. Like <laughs> just, it was just incredible. Went. And I'm yeah. like, dude, stop and eat, stop and drink. He just wanted to work all day, and I love you, brother. You are awesome. And I hope he can make it to SRF. That yes, would be awesome. if you can, you there's awesome tickets. There'll be tickets waiting there for you. Just let me know if you're coming. I'd love to have you. His kids come down, and of course, we don't talk about him, but Bruno. Oh, yes, and we got to mention Bruno. You didn't put him in your list. No, I didn't. We'll talk about Bruno. Yeah. He's like that. <laughs> Pippin says that dude stacks six or eight piles of, dozen, of a dozen trees. Right. I know. You go up there now, and it's like somebody was cutting wood. Guys, I don't – it is un – it's impossible to explain <laughs> through, through the Internet how much work and how much of a blessing this was. I still feel, hey, brother Chris Dixon, love to see you. I still don't, we don't feel worthy of it, you know? No, and that's it, the beauty of it. That's what, when people care for each other, that's what we do. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, and yeah, he says, uh, uh, Off Grid Pink says, love you all, got one tick too. <laughs> we didn't good. have any ticks. And, good. and I was yeah. so happy about that. I was like, oh, we come back here. I'm like, oh, I hope I don't have any ticks. But Kyle knows about, we don't, we don't talk about Bruno. Yes. No, we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> So I, I do have to say, Bruno is the sweetest little dog. Yeah. And and it was so funny. I live. Um, because he was because I was clearing out the one area down by the the outhouse there, and so he was like hanging with me while Jamie because he got his foot got hurt by a log. So he he his feeling <laughs> well his, the biggest baby well in his the world. feelings were hurt anyway. So he came down to hang out with me and um. And then I felt like I've an awful babysitter because we had the, the pulled pork um, cooking and it was dripping mm. off the table and he was licking um, the the grease off the leaves and it was dripping on the dummy's head the whole time. <laughs> so, and then of course, then he'd walk away and find the biggest mound of dirt and then he started rolling in the dirt pile. <laughs> so he looked like, uh, like Dottie, the the dirt pile. He was he was a ditch pig. So Sean, I gotta take a picture of this so we can share this on social later, guys. We're gonna see. Oh, it's all twisty here. There we go. So Sean was nice enough to bring a uh what you, I don't know what kind of oven it is, but a bar, uh, a propane. Oh, it was really oven. nice. Yeah, and it just yeah. took like those little mini propane tanks. So we were heating up Andy's meat, <laughs> lots of jokes there, <laughs> pulled pork. And it was so good. Hey, Polar Nights, good morning from North mm -hmm. Norway. Good morning from Central Tennessee. Yeah, no, we're good morning. Sorry, we're we're evening. Yeah. being polite by saying, yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so <laughs> the thing was, you know, everything's on a slope on that yep. land, right? So here, here's the oven like this, and it's a bit of a slope. So as it heats up, the meat juices are dripping and dripping and dripping. <laughs> And little Bruno, he's like this little, what, five pounds soaking? No, he's probably 10 pounds. I don't think he's 10 pounds. He's now. a pound anyway. And he is literally being bathed in meat juices. He's laying there and he's getting it on his neck and he's licking it. The dude looked like, he looked like me in 2003 when I used to have frosted blonde tips and I'd put uh, dippity doo gel in my yeah. hair. That's what he looked like. He was like. so greasy. It was on. And, and I don't think, I think the only thing I, I don't, I wonder if Jamie was able to get, like, probably Dawn would be the only thing I to get that know. off. But, but when you picked him up, he smelled like, um, like bacon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
And the food was awesome. Pippin says the food. The food was so good. It was good. And I see Mike. So Mike Desjardins is in. Uh, he is only a couple hours away from us. Okay. He came and worked all day at the at the cabin as well. And the two that I absolutely, I think these are the only ones I didn't mention. I left them for last. Okay. Was uh, Steve and Amby. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anybody else. And I think I got Jeremy, Brian, and Corey, Jamie. Yeah. Okay. Steve and Amby. Guys, these are... They, I tell you this, Steve and I had an awesome, probably an hour long conversation over what did we have last night? Uh, it was a uh, Irish whiskey that was so yep. sweet. And you know what? I was mixing it with Dr. Pepper last night and it was fucking awesome. Steve and, and coffee. I, Steve, yeah. Coffee. <laughs> Steve coffee and I just, we sat there, got drunk and told stories to each other. And it was an awesome, awesome conversation. I love you. So these guys drove from South Carolina, showed up. Wednesday night, Wednesday yep. late afternoon, they just came for the work day. And you don't know how much that means to us, brother and sister. Yep. <laughs> also, Steve was nice enough to fill me in ahead of time on the fact that it was Amby's birthday. And to try, and I think he said to try to embarrass her. He said, her, do right? your best to embarrass her. <laughs> and uh, so we did. <laughs> I mean, whatever. We, we saved the cake. We got to sing her happy birthday. So we'll never forget that it was Amby's birthday at the Delinquent's Gully get shit done weekend so we now have the most incredible bridge yep. that goes across our creek because there was a land bridge but it was like a u-shaped land bridge probably a two foot drop yeah 18 inches two feet i was pretty concerned that at some point somebody's going to roll an ankle like me or, or me it would be me pop a <laughs> knee you know twist a hip break 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 a hip and have to go into traction no <laughs> no but, <laughs> that would be me yeah, yeah. something anyway and also it was sheer hell getting material across the creek. Yeah. So, you know, this would be me coming down with a footing block, you know, those 40 pound cinder blocks. I get to one side of the Brian shows up. He's like, dude, why are these cinder blocks all over the place? And I'm like, cause I threw them across the freaking Creek. He's like, you threw them. <laughs> yeah. So now I won't have to throw cinder blocks across the Creek anymore. So. Yeah. And I am going to, we're going to find you a, a, a big wagon. Yeah. So you can haul things. We're going to make too. some sort of post-apocalyptic material. Transportation. <laughs> maybe we could like, maybe we could like steal a shopping cart from somewhere. It'll can, be like a redneck rickshaw. Yeah, That's and you can like, be. I don't know, modify it or mm -hmm. something. So it'll be awesome. Anyway, so that's what uh, mm. Philippine Nomad says. What's this? Send two hundred stars on Facebook. It's some way to tip. I haven't looked into it yet. I have yet. no idea. I think you have to buy. I don't know. Don't I, anyway. Whatever. I, have I love no you, I, Philippine. Yeah. yeah I, no, I, I, I have no idea what it means. Red Moose uh, says, "Amby says thanks for making your day special. Everyone put in great work this week. Yeah, everybody did. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm still we, feeling it today. Oh, my forearms and my shoulders. I don't yeah. know what I did to my left shoulder, but it, it's a mess. Oh yeah, and something gouged me up and just ripped open like, the side of my just leg. Like, yeah, this thing here. <laughs> She's like, "Honey, can you look at this? Do I need stitches?" I'm like, "Well, if there was any meat left there to stitch, you would." But <laughs> I, don't know, what I, do I don't even know how I did it. So yeah, a huge gouge on my leg. So it, I don't know. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, but you're good. I don't think it's infected. I don't if think it so. is, we'll I get checked. To, check to look at it tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, we've got a bridge that will help me get material up the hill now, which is awesome. We have a legit cabin. It yep. is eight by eight, guys, with a four by eight deck. And who stayed in it last night? Uh, Jeremy stayed yeah, in it last yes. night. Yes. So but we didn't ask him how it was. No, I did. He said it was very cozy. He said, nice. Yeah, he said, uh, I, I said, no snakes. He's like, no, I was good. So, <laughs> but it was so he, yeah, it's there. So mm -hmm. now when I come down in, January, February, February whatever you want like to. That. Yep. And stay in my little Ted Kaczynski cabin and work on my manifesto. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Um, I'll be able to have somewhere to sleep. I'm going to build a little platform for a single bed for the time being. Yep. We yep. also have the coolest little wood stove that we haven't talked and, about yet. Right? And actually, you should say um, uh, his name is Emmanuel Lewis, Williams. Oh, yes. Emmanuel was. Oh, we yeah, didn't and, met um, so many cool people. And that's who we bought the wood stove off. Yep. And if anybody in the Tennessee area wants an affordable, incredible it wood a stove, great shop stove. A great, yeah. Yep. His work is incredible. And like, because, you know, when, when you when you see something online, you're like, oh, okay, well, you don't know mm -hmm. if it's a, a stock photo or a real photo or anything. And um and the price was like too good to be yeah true, it was right? two hundred dollars it was two thirty one ninety nine and then uh and then he said he he would put a cook plate on it for an extra thirty five dollars yep and so it came to two thirty four 
And we went and picked it up and it was absolutely beautiful. It, it was unreal. I it mean, it's painted, it's welded. Stove. So it's made, he, we bought the smaller one. We, yeah. Well, he does double, he does yeah. a, a double one and a single one. This one was made out of a 30 gallon barrel, right? Yep. yep. 30 gallon metal barrel. So it, it's like a shop stove, really. And it's got the nice door handle kit on the yep. front. And it's got a damper in the top. I forgot it had a damper. It has nice feet. And then the back is made so that you can remove the entire back and pull all the ashes out if you want to. And it has, well, it's cast iron feet. Cast iron. Yeah, it was. It, Beautiful. So it is going to heat me way out of that little cabin to start with. So. Well, yeah, but you don't need to run it. But, like, the whole point is because you're making that cabin bigger. Right. And then he's building us half-size ones yep. for the other cabins. For the little cabin. And then we, and... And he's incredible too, because like you message him and you're like, "Hey, um, we need fire rings for fire pits." Yep. And we said, and he's like, "Well, how many do you need?" And we we're like, "Well, we'll we'll start with five. And he goes, "Oh, I can have them for you Saturday." And this was this morning. Yep. And it's like, oh no, no, you don't need he's to like, do them that quickly. Fifteen dollars a ring, and I'm like, I told I, anyway. I saw him yeah, go to like, stoves. He should be charging double, but it's okay. He's doing yeah. So he's gonna yeah. have all our fire pits done by Monday, so we can take those. Take up. them down, so we'll have yeah. fire pits on the five camp or the four campsites plus. Yeah. Our yes, site, yep, yeah, like it just just in, he does incredible work. Oh man, it's awesome! Yep. And yeah, so we got we got the cabin, yeah, we got the bridge, the path. So they're they're walkable. They're beautiful now, yep. which is awesome. It is so. Um, Gracie just said, "I can't wait." So here's something else I'll fill you guys in on. Can't wait to see all the hard work we've done. Mm. So I've been filming a bunch. We have lots of pictures and film for you. Gracie. We do, yes. yes. And so what I am doing, actually, I've been paying somebody on Fiverr to do it for me. Okay. I've been sending the footage to them and having them turn them into 15-minute episodes so that we're going to do like a weekly or bi-weekly series of The Delinquent's Gully. Because I love watching those homestead videos where people buy off-grid properties, fix them up. Actually, my favorite, though, is um, Colin Frews that does the underground bunker in England. He's okay. been doing it for like four years. People just live for those things. And I love it, too. So I figure you guys would like to go along on the journey. And uh, yeah, I will tell you. Yeah, Pippin says, "How much is that metal stove?" Uh, Two hundred and thirty-four dollars. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know it's unreal how cheap that was. It yeah, should be more than that. It should be way more than that. But but he says that he does. He makes enough, and that's what he charges. And he and sells he said, hundreds of them a year. And he said he doesn't even take money all the time. Sometimes he barters with barters, people. Yep. So. He was a guy that arced me. I'm going to have him as an interview on the show. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, would you come? Yeah, he will. Yeah. So anyway, so we're making a series. I don't exactly know what it's going to be. Maybe I don't know Gully Gully Chronicles or Delinquent Gully's Chronicles or something. Well, you have like to that. keep the name. In yeah, it. yeah, yeah, we will. So, so we've got probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know Pippin. I know he says that you're freaking nuts. Yeah, that, yeah. And uh, how big are the fire pit rings? So he takes a 55 gallon bucket, a barrel, and cuts it into thirds. I think I'm pretty thirds sure. or half. Or half. Yeah, yeah, thirds or half, one or the other. So. If you want one, Ping, let me know, and I could probably add another one onto the list. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like I couldn't believe how much I couldn't believe when he said they're only fifteen dollars. It's like that's insane. too cheap. Yeah, but yeah. that's okay. So, and uh, yeah, worried about backup heat. Yeah, Pip Pippin don't need much for heat down in Florida, but yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, it's going to be a series. I'm pretty excited, and it, it's going back to pull clips from when we first landed there in April when we first did our first walk. That interview that Carrie and Brian and I did. We're yep. gonna. Cut it all down. It's going to be nice. I, I don't know why I'm, I just love doing this stuff. So I want to share that story with you. So anyway. And they can say. follow Brian. Yes. Because Brian at the Lots Project, he's been doing a lot of filming there as well. And he, and he's doing a lot of clearing. Yes. So, and, and of course he knows more about that kind of stuff. than. And I all these think. episodes are also going to be on the Lots Project. Yes. Too. So all of that's going there as well. And yeah. Um, so that's yeah, the thing I wanted to share the story with because every building on the property has to have a name. That's just seems to be, I don't know what you call it. It's just our tradition, right? So we've been struggling with coming up with a name for the outhouse. <laughs> not anymore, guys. It just hit us yesterday while we were up, we we're working on the cabin. I'm not sure who brought it up first, but it was. Uh, so anybody who is a Art Bell fan and you love Art Bell, you'll appreciate this. But we have now named the outhouse. The composting toilet is called Mel's Hole. <laughs> Mel's H-O-L-E, Mel's Hole. And if you don't know that story, it is a great story from the, the classic golden years of Art Bell's Coast to Coast AM. And it's a story about <laughs> a dude who lives in eastern Washington in the woods who supposedly has a pit 
with no bottom. <laughs> and the story for the last, anyway, basically for the last century, people were throwing garbage in it and it was disappearing. Apparently it goes down like 16 miles with no bottom. So that's the name of our 30 gallon, uh, yeah, composting outhouse. So, oh boy. yeah, so Carrie is going to make the, so if you guys don't know, of course, Carrie, Carrie was an old school Art Bell listener, talk radio. You know my love for talk radio. He grew up on Art Bell. There we go. And, okay, go ahead. I'm show you. Yeah. So this, this is the stoves he makes. Aren't they gorgeous, guys? For those in the audio, it's it's a, a you know a flat back black painted 30, 30 or 35 gallon barrel with the kit from it's not Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't know. Tractor supply, maybe they have so you tractor know, supply. Yeah, tractor yeah. supply. So you get the, the handle, the door, the vent, the feet, the damper on the top, like the whole and then, thing. And then this is the, the cook plate that he yeah. puts on. Yeah, it's a quarter inch steel cook plate on the top. And yeah. so you can boil water, make stew, you know, do your laundry, whatever you want to do. It's yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, I know. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not going to read this on the audio, <laughs> but for anybody who wonders where my kids get their um, humor from, just read that comment, guys. That's what my daughter would say. So mm -hmm. stove link on Telegram. Yeah, we'll send we'll send pictures in there. I've got yeah, I'm s i am have just an absolute glut of content that you guys are going to see for the next six months, right? So Yes, everybody said three hundred fifty to five hundred dollar range. I, you're no, you're one hundred percent right, Pippin. I've mm -hmm. had two other people who have said the same thing. No, the stoves are one ninety nine. Yep. And if you want the cook plate, he charges you thirty five dollars, and it comes out to two thirty four. It was unreal. We we were, yeah. we're blessed, and we yeah. He, and he does make double ones too. The the double ones are incredible. Yeah, they give off a lot of heat. I'm, I wasn't sure what what we could do with that. But Mitch, I Mitch has a tractor supply. Yeah. I, I went into Tractor Supply the other day, and it surprised me at how much it was like PV Mart from Canada. Turns out that Tractor Supply and PV Mart used no, am I getting that? Yeah, no. Tractor Supply and PV Mart used to be the same company, and then they separated from Canadian and American things. But so, what else did we? Okay, yeah, you cleared. Mrs. Cook got out with the weed whipper, which surprised the hell out of me. Well, because um, uh, I can't I can't use the gas ones no. because they're too heavy. Yeah, but um, I think it was Sean's. Yeah, it was the battery and, uh, one, the Rayobi one. Rayobi, yeah. uh, the battery one. And I picked it up, and I was like, oh, well, geez, I could use that. It's not much heavier than the DeWalt one. So right. so I used that, and um, I cleared the parking pad as far back as Brian told me to go. He said there was a pile of yeah. brush, and he said to stop there because, well, I probably could have went further, but I, I think I'd have a hard time getting around yes. it. But, and then I went, and I came back, and I cleared all that out, and then I, I raked it. So now it's a nice parking. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. So we've got we got a parking area up there, and <laughs> CJ says, "Wow, at prices, my brother bought a mop and bucket today for a hundred dollars." Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. So this parking area has got room. So basically, what's going to happen? We're we're putting a driveway in yep. so that you can at least get up as far as the outhouse. So you're going to come in, you're going to go up and do a circle, and then you're going to come back and park on a 45 in between trees. We yeah. figure we've got room for about 10 parking spots, 10 to 12. Probably. Right? I think it probably has to be pushed back a little bit. Right? We will, yeah. But I didn't want, you don't want to push it back too far to the one side because that's a, a campsite. Right. So I'm thinking if if we went maybe two feet on that side and then maybe three feet on the other side and cleared it yeah, back a little work. more. Yeah. And everybody was nice enough to cut me a bigger turnaround area for me Yeah, because Steve said, <laughs> cause you kept it in the damn tree. This was, well, <laughs> it's a big truck to get turned around in such a tiny spot. So Steve said, this was a deep cut. He's like, yeah. So you don't have to look like Austin powers turning around. And I forgot about that gag, but anybody who's old enough to remember Austin powers where he had that little car and he had to do 84. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I would end up doing to be able to get backed up to use the place as a bench, the back of the truck. So now we got that wider for yep. swinging the paths and be, that woman was a machine. She was on that. Um, it was the gas powered one she was using. Yeah. I don't know how she was using that one. That one was so heavy. And, uh, but she came back and her hands were vibrating. vibrating. Yeah. And I was like, I, and you guys raked, you guys all raked. Too. Yeah, we you raked just... it all up. Well, because a lot of it was, um, that, that damn picker bushes mm -hmm. and I, and it doesn't matter where you walk. It's like this vine and it just wraps around your leg and those yeah. pickers. And when you try pulling it, they just dig into your skin. And so you have to rake that up because it, it still, it still snags you, even if it's cut. Oh yeah. It's so bad. we were, it's like vines. It reminds me of that. Yeah, uh, it's awful. Or that little pet shop of horrors or whatever. Yeah. And, and, 
and they hurt. Oh yeah. Cause that, that's what was uh, picking me around my feet and, and the little, um, I don't know if it has like a coating on it or something, but that's what is infected a couple of my mm-hmm. little cuts because it just, it leaves like a splinter. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's miserable. They're, oh, it's, and they trip you too. Cause they, yeah. they tie themselves into the ground and, uh, well, if I had <laughs> <laughs> dark wing Dave over on uh, feed me Seymour. Remember from, uh, yeah. That's if I had question. my way, I'd go up there and like, just burn it. I know you would. Yeah. But, um, and then I mentioned something about, uh, pesticides and everything yeah. and i guess Perfect. nobody likes pesticides but i'm thinking thinking in my brain okay so this is a a liberty state people walk around with ak-47s hooked around their neck but they look at you sideways when you mention pesticides <laughs> you want to be able to eat your, you want to be able to eat what you grow right and so, well yeah but yeah. you're not growing anything in a parking pad no no so I understand. but i'm just like it do, doesn't make any sense to me but that's okay so we but, need to get our next yeah so Next steps, I guess, is mm-hmm. the, the big one is getting a culvert in off the, the road, isn't it? Yes. We need to get a culvert. We I gotta I gotta talk to Jason. That's Texas Tennessee Moonshiner at yeah, and, SRF. And get then we gotta get a hold of um I gotta we gotta track down Norman and Herschel tomorrow. Find yes. out the name of that um lumber yard. Yes. Because it, if it's like not far, we could probably pick up a bunch of lumber before we leave. That's true. And then leave it up get, there. Yeah. Yeah. If not, we can pick it up when we get back. But and you have um, so guys, you guys have heard me. If I haven't told you exactly what I'm talking about, I've said we've had special swag for everybody that we've yep. met in person this year. So they're basically this patch right here. However, they have 2023. I'm try, I can't do this. My hands are backwards. 2023, and they glow in the dark. And there, I learned this term from Nate at the workshop meetup in Illinois. They're called a handshake patch, and it basically represents. When you meet somebody in person, you give them a piece of the swag. I had a hundred of those printed after LFTN. So I didn't even have them for LFTN. And I thought, okay, if we get close to a hundred for the year, yeah, I'll be happy. Even 50, I would have been happy. Well, guys, they're gone. The patches are gone. I have we have two for no, you've got two. Well, I've got two. I got one for Herschel and Norman. Yep. And then you had two one. for Kyle and his wife. Kyle and his wife, and I think that was it. I think that was it. It might have one left. So um, yeah. that's it, though. So that empty, I don't have it here to show you, but I will. We will talk about that. That empty container represents 100 awesome interactions with delinquents that I've had this year. So that that's 100 community members that had a significant conversation with one another that got a piece of... And, uh, you, know, you know, and, and don't... Um, and any conversations we have tomorrow and stuff, we apologize. We don't have any matches. No, right I've now. already told a few people. So anybody that we meet up with at SRF, if you give me your address, we will get more printed and we will send them out. I had no expectations that we would go through 100, let alone 150 or something. So And actually, Mom, I was wearing pants. Yes. And they still dug me. And it went through my pants and took a chunk out of my leg. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, a chunk. Like, not just a, like a chunk, yeah. Yeah, I was like, there'd be nothing here to sew together anyway, honey. So we'll just let it be, right? So, but uh, yeah, Gracie says, you didn't think you know a guy for 20 years and don't even get a patch. <laughs> hey, there's lots of patches in the basement. Go load up. Just not those ones. But mm. so that There isn't any of those in the basement anyway. <laughs> but it was, it was exciting. Oh, and, of course, speaking of tools, nobody was talking about tools, but no. I am. So Fred, um, Fred and Melissa... Well, uh, oh my God! Like Whit 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 Whitakin, Sarah, Sarah. Sorry, not Melissa. I know I Sarah, about, Melissa White. Yes, okay. Help me out here, Fred and Sarah Whit Whitakin, Whit Whittlekin, Whittlekin. Yes, I I don't want to butcher their. I we already did, and you guys are going to hear this podcast, and you're going to be like, "Oh my God, Tim was drunk or something." But no, <laughs> I'm just horrible with names. And so anyway, Fred lent us a whole bunch of Ryobi gear. Thank you, Fred. I love you. That the um. It's a framing nailer. That mm-hmm. thing had all the power all day. We worked on that all day and never put it down one number, one light on the battery. Yeah. It was awesome. So thank you for that. I'm I'm going to get one. And for me to say I'm going to buy Ryobi, it was Ryobi. Oh, yeah, nice. And okay. what you used was Ryobi. The yeah, no, but I wasn't sure so, the nail gun was. Yeah, the nail gun was awesome. Is, is that like Home Depot? Uh, the nail. Uh, yeah, that can't be Harbor Freight. No, no, no it's the... yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's Home Depot or Lowe's. Maybe both. Okay. Anyway, yeah. But it was, so I got to get one because I do not have, yeah, Pippin says that nail gun was mint. It was, and I, it blew me away how easy yeah. and how it was fairly light. And the best part was reloading the nails. So was it 
battery or compressor? Battery. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if I had that, or I had one of those, and I had my seven and a quarter inch DeWalt chop saw, that'd be all we'd need for putting things together. Well, up you there. don't even have to have a DeWalt. Ryobi's probably got one. They do, but I, I've already, I already own the DeWalt. I know, but but if you got the True. Ryobi, yeah, I, now then. The batteries would be interchangeable. Yep. And then you can just leave it down here. Yeah, that's true. Storage locker. Yeah. I'll so that, that way you're not hauling your tools back and forth over the border. Because to be absolutely honest, mm -hmm. I am pretty disappointed with my six and a half inch um harbor freight chop um skill saw. Oh, big surprise. Uh, it's under harbor freight. Yeah. <laughs> and also my harbor freight. <laughs> we were using my impact driver yesterday and we unleashed some of the white smoke. It kept working. But I looked at. I, can you take it back? I can if I burn it up. Yeah, I cannot remember. It might have been Steve was with me. Yeah, and I was like, "Did you see that?" Yeah, I saw it. The smoke come out of the gun. So, anyways, oh but, my goodness. Um, this, yeah. Okay, this is why I tell you that Harbor Freight is the American Princess Auto. Oh, you're not wrong. But but like the problem is though, it's but I the still same, eat at Waffle House. But it was, it was <laughs> it's the same lecture I gave you years and years and years ago when we first got together when you were buying those damn cheap shoes i know and by time you buy new shoes every two months just spend an extra sixty dollars right. and buying something that's gonna last i literally longer. did a presentation at prepper camp where one of the things i say is it pays to buy quality and then, and then what do i do go to harbor i go to buy Shit, because I still sometimes live in a poverty mindset, even though I don't need to. So okay. I get it. You know what? I would be happy if you would just stay away from her freight. Can't do that. Well, Their generators think... are too fucking nice. So well, yeah. um, no, they're not because I, they just recalled a... them all. Yeah, so... there's a recall on those. So yeah, we'll so, about that, yeah. Yeah, so like they're obviously not that good. And I really I really think you're gonna get one and then you're gonna run it and you're gonna run it, and all of a sudden you're gonna see that damn white smoke, and then you're gonna be pissed off. Well, the one that we have has been great. The one that Barrett used, and uh, yeah, yeah, I like that one. But... Well, okay, it. I'll let you get the generator, but we are not buying Thanks any more boss. tools from Harbor Freight. We are not buying any more tools from there. So CJ Chris says it's time to pick up a few comic relief tools from Team U for a good laugh. And mm -hmm. um, so I actually, if you haven't seen Chris, I've done two videos on Team U gear that I've bought, and I've actually they're quite interesting. Some of it was shit. Some of it was great. I don't think and, I'd buy tools from yeah. them. No, I did. Well, it was survival yeah. gear. What did well, I, I yeah, a, little, but... a little mini pump and Why don't you turn behind saw. like an impact driver? <laughs> I will. Yes, I will. That would be, <laughs> be like this. Yes. See just... if you can remember that for me too, baby. Yeah. Uh, so, do, they, do they have that kind of stuff? They do have some, yes. Oh, that, that's um, kind of scary. Off-Grid Ping says on the Predators. So not on all the Predators. Just so there's a recall, guys. So I mm -hmm. found this out. I've been on the hunt for the new dual fuel Harbor Freight Predator generator, which I've been really excited to get. And we we're like, it's not anywhere. We can't find it. Turns out there's been a recall. There's some sort of issue. There's a video on YouTube if you find it. Harbor Freight won't tell me what it is. I've asked a bunch of people. At, oh, yeah. You ask yeah. them and they're all like, well, they won't tell us. They and I'm like, oh, us. yes, they did. You were something, told not to tell them. Yeah. So they're, right? they're hiding something for right now. Mm -hmm. It appears to be not all of them, but a vast majority of them. They're saying it's a certain PO number that they ordered them on, but it looks like it is 90% of them because we can't find a store within 500 miles. Of no, this and that's them. what makes me nervous. If like, okay, Harbor Freight is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if they're recalling something, but they can't be honest about why they're recalling it, that, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Like that's, that's sketchy. Here's, here's right? the, okay. Here's what I have to say about that. I'm not sure they know what's wrong with it yet. Because yeah, the but video, they could let people know. The video because, that I watched, the dude right. is he was like, Yeah, see, Byron says none in central Kentucky. Yeah. So what I've seen, and I wish I could show it out. I'm gonna see if I can find the guy. So on YouTube, there's a guy I watched that has a lot of generator videos, and he bought one. He was the first guy to have the video, and it was awesome. And he made tons of views off it, but he also discovered that his is having problems. And what ends up happening is at a spike in voltage, it flatlines. It, it can't handle the spike for some reason, and then hmm. it just shuts down. It keeps running, but it internally trips, and it makes a really funny noise. But then why not just say that? I Because I don't know if they know what's causing the problem, and they don't want to admit it. I think that's what it comes down to. But doesn't that scream yes. sketchy? Right here, guys. 
Johnny's Weekends. He's an awesome generator channel. If you're not watching him, he's the guy that has the video on the problems with Harbor Freight. So that's the issue. I can't find one to get my hands on, even if I could. I don't know if I would right now. No, even I think you'd just be disappointed, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it would be a great video, but I don't want to buy shit. Well, and if then... you want a dual gener a dual one, why don't you just go get one from Costco? Well, because I already have a tri fuel. I just wanted something I could do a great review on for people to share the gospel because it, it's a brand new product and it I wouldn't it be I don't know. Is, Any yeah. I know, but I so don't that's know. where we're at. There's there's no answer from Harbor Freight. If anybody else out there knows what's going on, it'd be great, but that's the best I can tell you. So the worst of it is, is I told my brother, Joel, Joel Ryle. When he yep, said Joel loves he it. He does, yeah. yeah. So he asked me, he said, Tim, what generator would you buy right now? And I said, I would buy the Herber Freight Predator 5000 watt dual fuel. But she, but she said he loves it, yes. and, it and it's running perfectly good for him. And I hope he has no And I think with most it. people, it is running good for yeah. them. But there's been enough that they had to haul them back. Mm -hmm. And so right now, if you go on their website, it says new stock December 20th. Mm -hmm. so we'll see if they get the problem fixed anyway joel's happy with his for now yeah it's been running good and I, yeah i hope yeah. he has no problems with it at all but but like it, it's just i don't know i just think it's sketchy when they can't it is i hate him. i hate it when they say that yeah. for sure yeah but, like it, because you know like it doesn't make them very trustworthy so i may not come back with any piece of gear to review other than uh the 500 uh assemble it yourself trailer that i'm going to pick up I know you want your hate. Your hate. Yeah, oh, big surprise from Harbor Freight. <laughs> four by eight foldable trailer. That's what I want to get. So, I think we should just get a trailer from like Lowe's or Home Depot or something I because know. I no. It'll make great videos. No, it won't because you're going to spend all this money and you're going to get it up there and it's going to be nothing but shit and you know it. Just going to shout out to Steve. He said, "Good night, all. Work in the morning, Tim and Becky. Love you guys. Y'all enjoy SRF. Knock them dead, Tim. Thank you, brother." It was good to have you. Yeah, no, it's just going to end up being shit. I know. So I, I we'll say, you, I say we just look around at Lowe's or Home Depot, and find something that you can do a review on there. But I just think that the Harbor Freight one is just going to be a waste of time. Well, we'll see. I'm not agreeing one way or the other, so we'll go from there. <laughs> you know, I'm right. I know. <laughs> it's like we, I don't know. I just it's okay. It's just the more and more that you get at Harbor Freight, the more and more disappointed you always seem to be. So it's just, I think it's just. You're just wasting. we'll try. It. It's just going to be a waste of time and money. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's time we wrap this up, Mrs. Cook, because we got an early rise. We yes, got to be. We, do. we have a. I, I'm emceeing part of Self Alliance Festival, so we have a, a roundtable meeting in the morning for that. We got to get our, our uh, booth set up with Brian and Kyle and Pippin mm -hmm. and maybe Micah. I'm not sure if Micah's in on it as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. So it honestly, guys, we are at the the first night kind of the, I don't know how you put it, but like the, the pre-night of self-reliance tonight, and it was awesome. And it feels like it's going to be a really big deal this year. Yeah, um, they had over... A, ton, a well over 500. Oh, 500 well tickets over 500 sold, tickets yeah. sold. Way more vendors than normal. Yeah. The atmosphere there already is through the roof. And it, the weather's supposed to be really nice. Beautiful so, weather. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. So tomorrow is my day to walk and talk and chat with everybody because sad, Sunday I open up the show with the poverty mindset presentation and then second to last in the evening is i'm absolute 60 vendors pippin said holy that's shit that's incredible yeah. yeah and so somehow i've been blessed enough to be on a panel with Jack spirko john willis and joel salatin and myself second to last thing in the day and that is such an honor that's I on can't sunday. wait that's on sunday as well yeah. so be a lot of talking on sunday Honestly, I won't shut up the whole weekend. So. No. Because I love the sound of my own voice. No. I love to hear everybody's stories. Yeah. I might not remember your name, but I'll remember your damn story. So thanks, everybody, for sharing with us. This was – we had an awesome work day out there, didn't we? We did. I can't believe we haven't dropped dead yet from exhaustion. But So for the record, today is day 31 of the road trip. It looks like when it's all said and done, my trip's going to be 38 or 39 days. We're not yeah. going to quite hit 40, which is crazy. I thought it was 35 to start. but <laughs> yeah, I was thinking there earlier when you, when you were talking about not hitting quite long enough. Uh, like for some reason, something flashed in my mind when we, were, when we get to Montana that there's a possibility we could start hitting snow. Oh, yes. So that's a four letter word. Well, I know, <laughs> but it, it is a possibility, especially because we're going through Montana to pick up the mail. Yep. We, we got to come up through Calgary, which is another possibility we could be hitting snow. 
Mm -hmm. So well, we got good tires on, and we do. But you we'll know, just, like we'll just go slow if we have to. Like I'm just, I was just like, oh, we'll have. To, I don't want to have to hunker down somewhere in like Lethbridge or Calgary somewhere. But well, we did that last spring. Remember, we hunkered yep. down in Minot for a night. So anyway, guys, we appreciate you. We wanted to get this live in, just to touch base with everybody that we love in, in Delinquent Skelly. <laughs> Honestly, it was and great. back home. No, I, I, yeah. all, I just. Yeah. They use delinquent Skelly as the, the everybody catalog, is so. yeah that that's going to be the umbrella it is name yes. for everybody that is in contact with us and everybody that has associations with us if we should if we shake your hand and we talk to you you are officially a delinquent yes 100%, <laughs> so, absolutely there you go. so it was great to see everybody at the work day it's going to be great to see everybody at self reliance festival um hopefully i'll have a voice maybe we'll do a live depending on what we're doing monday night so we're staying one extra day in Tennessee, and then we're hitting the road Tuesday morning. Yes, because we have to finish up stuff on the land on yeah. Monday, and then yeah, and then we're leaving early Tuesday. Tuesday, and looks like yeah. we're gonna make a four day trip going north. Yes, because we so, have well one extra day because we Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we have to go through Montana yeah. instead of up through uh, North Dakota. So if all goes well, we'll be home a week from today. Yes. If it doesn't, it might be later. So. Anyway, as long as we don't hit snow. Yeah, we will do a post. Well, we'll probably do a live show. I don't probably know. Probably Monday night. Yeah, but we might do one actually from Self Reliance as well. Who knows? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Brian and them are all talking about. Yeah, it, we could so. probably do one. Yeah. As long as things are quiet enough. And yeah, and I'm going to try to get you guys a few more interviews. I've got at least one lined up that hopefully you'll be excited about, and a couple more. And I'm just going to wear myself to a nub, give everything I have to this event, talk to everybody we can, and crash on Monday. Yep. All right, guys, we appreciate you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.